Leonora Paulson and Juliette Pelembe have come together to start the Global Employers Organization South Africa and the purpose of this organization is to create a healthy working environment while also preserving and developing work opportunities and this is particularly critical in a country that is confronted by catastrophic economic conditions where people face a multitude of challenges including high uh, rates of unemployment and to unpack this further we joined by CEO and co-founder of Global Employers Organization South Africa, Leonora Paulson. Leonora, thank you so much. And good afternoon. Thank you for coming through on a Saturday afternoon, by the way. <laughs> Just looking at the, um, especially motivation behind your organization, this was primarily to also safeguard the interests uh, of the employers, That's where courageous. employees have got the backing of uh, your, your unions, your, your unions etc. Give us the rationale behind this organization. Okay, maybe we should. Uh, thank you for having me, and um, I'm place to be here. So maybe we should first just go back and see um, why an employer's organization, what is an employer's organization. An employer's organization is an organization that represents employers mm -hmm. and there is different types of employers organizations out there already. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, there, are, there are other organizations who represent employers in different sectors or particular sectors for that matter. However, um, with regards to this employers organization, what makes this employers organization uh, better, I would say, or more prominent at this time is because COVID has happened, employers have suffered, and employers still has to com uh, comply with the internal policies and procedures as well as external, including the mandatory and, and statutory um, um, uh, basic conditions of Employment Act, as well as the LRA and all the other acronyms of the of the labour relation. I mean, of the employment relations. With this being said, um, in 2013, I, I was studying in my PGDL in labour law, and I have discovered that employers suffer the most. There's not really much for them and they need some voice, somebody to speak for them. All right, I, I'm just, I just quickly want to interject there, and you're not necessarily saying uh, you're protecting the employer's interests because no. there is a deliberate orchestrated attempt to stifle business or to make um, employee-employer relations any more strained. Exactly. What are you saying is, is, is essentially that um, employers also need to have a little bit more support. Of course, and maybe if I can just give you some example on this. Um, employers are, are, are compelled to, 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 to belong to certain bargaining councils and to, to obviously comply with what the regulation is of the councils. However, um, it's fine, and that is important because employees need to have employee benefits, such as your death and disability, your um, medical aid if necessary, or your provident fund. But one should also take into cognizance what is the magnitude of a business? Because most of the businesses that I would, would look at right now is your SMMEs, your small and medium enterprises. And you get four different types, as far as I can remember. You get the, um, the sole pro proprietor, you get the partnership, you get the LLC, which is your liability limited corporations, and you get your small corporations. And when you look at up until your small corporations, you're looking up until uh, 249 employees. Some employers only has four, four employees within their company, which is micro compared to the 249 in the in the in the uh, uh, in the close corporation. I mean, in the senior corporations. Mm -hmm. However, with this being said, the employer now has to also comply with the very same way with the bargaining council as that of the. The employer who has more employees, however, the overhead and the cost and the 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 the, the, um, the labour cost for that yeah. matter is more expensive. And I don't think one should just take it and say holistically all employers should comply to this. Yes, no, I hear you. So maybe for employers, especially SMEs, who are the backrock uh, rock uh, of uh, the economy, in the sense that they may not necessarily be able to comply by virtue of their size or lack of resources, uh, the issue around minimum wage, for example, and uh, also other employment equity or whatever other the, the Companies Act and the law prescribes. How do they then reach out to organizations like yourself to say, I'm struggling, I'm not necessarily complying with the uh, basic health conditions of my mm. business because I'm still renovating or trying to find my feet. Yes. So um, people like, well, our organization will obviously be the type of organization that will represent you and have a look. Our objective, obviously, is to get seats on bargaining councils. 
you know, so that we can help type of employees, um, employers like that who has issues that says I can't afford the, 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 the rate of, 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 of earnings for, for, for pertaining to the national minimum wage of this year, but this is what I can afford and want, you know, we would look at the, the affordability of the, the organization, you know, what is the magnitude of the business, and from there you can even look at the financials and maybe these employers could get condoned or would be allowed to be condoned to pay maybe a bit of a lesser increment on the national minimum wage, for example, or on um, employee benefits such as death and disability, maybe be a lower interest rate for the for the employer and the employee because both parties does uh, 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 donate to, to, to the fund. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So, so just before we let you go, just in a nutshell, one, uh, the protection that would your organization be able to afford employers of different sizes. That's correct. Uh, and two, how do they access that? At, 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 and three, at what stage of um, your organization are you to interface with your national bargaining councils, the Department of Labor and industry in general? Okay, so this organization is not only going to be representing your normal employer just of, of two employees, even the employer who owns a domestic worker and who's, in, 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 um, who's, who's supposed to assist a domestic worker and needs assistance. We'll start from scratch from those type of employees because we're going to recognize all employers geomet geometrically, not only your employer who owns um, employ uh, companies that has 10 or more, but even those who are smaller. We also will look at the affordability for the employee benefits to assist the employer also to, to be able to be okay. We will also, um, the way you can get hold of us is obviously on our website, um, but I'll get to that. What I do want to tell you what makes us also different, it's the first employers organization that is being established by women, and it's the first employers organization who is going to represent employers geometrically here in South Africa, but our objective is to go overseas to help employers overseas. Our objective is also to help employers in African continents, not only to do it here, but we're starting at home and we want to help employers to understand how to, we want to help employers to make profit in their business and to know that they, everything is going to be okay because you have us as an organization. But we also want the employees to know that we are also okay to help them. Um, yes. for the, with the unions and we'll be able to speak with the unions and the way to get hold of us is all obviously on our website yeah. which um, I think you'll give me an opportunity to do. Yes um, and, and um, I like what you said about especially let's say in the household where there are domestic workers um, and the employer might feel under pressure just because of the economic conditions and is no, no longer able to have a domestic worker but you can have a mediator in between that says look mm. instead of the 3,000 500 mm. prescribed minimum wage, I can afford 2,500, for example. And if that is um, agreeable, then you still maintain the relationship and the job. You see, because that, that is exactly what I like. That's called a collective agreement, which would supersede the agreement given by, 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 um, by government or by the Department of Labor or, or, or orchestrated by bargaining councils. However, this, this is not recognized because if you go to the bargaining council, which, is, which I don't find fair, is if a matter like this should probably be heard in front of a commissioner. Guess what? Most of the bargaining councils I've been to, it's always the same commissioner that they seem to be the independent uh, electoral commissioner, which how could he be he's so independent if he listens to my case, to, uh, my, my conciliation, and tomorrow he listens to my arbitration. He was already privy to the matter with conciliation, pertaining to this wage increase or the wage um, 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 negotiation. Now he's also privy to the arbitration, which is unfair. Yeah. So one person always listens to the matters of, 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 of um, at the bargaining council. There isn't different... Um, um, uh, commissioners to listen to different matters, if you hear what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I just want to put this maybe a bit of a spanner in the works in the sense that while um, we've got all these laws, especially to protect uh, vulnerable employees, you know, your domestic workers or those that earn uh, below a particular threshold, the, the introduction of um, cheap imported or uh, immigration, uh, how, how has that changed the not only the work environment, but work opportunities for South Africans, and, and how is your organization then going to mitigate what some may, f may seem or deem to have been a negative impact uh, with the uh, immigration of uh, cheap labor? Yeah, you see, and um, I'm going to be very honest with you, there are a lot of SMMEs that are using the immigration and the cheap labor because our South African people yeah, obviously knows that, that, you know, uh, knows that this is the national minimum wage, and the people or 
the influx of foreigners who ever comes and works within our country, um, they are willing to say, look, we are able to negotiate for less, and therefore employers rather rely on the, 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 immigrated, uh, the, 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 the national immigration people who comes across to South Africa. So would they also be protected under the organization that, um, you know, the employers' organization South Africa that you have? Well, it depends how they came into the country. You understand what I'm saying? Um, is every, if, if everything is legitimate um, mm. and, the, you know, it is, it is an, uh, a skilled source, that is that we can't require or, or can't grant you in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And somebody else, obviously those, those type of people, you do need them. Yeah. And they will add value to our, our, our country. Yeah. Uh, just your, your website, contact details, and also the fact that we've made so much progress when it comes to transformation, not only of uh, your staff compliments and, uh, you know, our position, uh, positions rather at management level, not only for women, but black people. And by black, I mean the universal definition of, of black. Um, the protection of the employer, is that not potentially going to... Um, threaten the, the, the gains that have been made if the employer feels I don't want to comply with uh, economic or employment equity or BE or any one of those? No, you see, none, none of this or, or none of our organization mitigations or the objectives would speak to um, making things seem unfair and the, the employers become um, rebellious, if I may use that word, to say that they don't want to comply. We're looking at the mag, we want to say, look at the magnitude of a company or a business and work around that and see how best um, employees that has, very, uh, has, has um, small corporations or close corporations, they should be first looked at and also proprietors, they should be first looked at and said, okay, fine, this is the magnitude of this business. Maybe the interest should be the interest rate of percentage of, of salaries or wages should be this, or it should be that, and that's how we should maybe look at it. We are looking at complying. We want to regulate. We want to do things properly, but give the employers a breathing space. They, I can go on and on and say even yes. certain other things, but yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, we, we're really out of time, but mm -hmm. uh, just your contact details, your website, as you said, sir, for uh, SMEs that want to reach out and other organizations as well. You can just give it to us. Okay. So my contact details is Leonora mm -hmm. at paulsonir.co.za. Le okay. All right, Leonora, we're going to leave it there. That's Leonora at paulsonir.co.za. All right, much appreciated. We're speaking to CEO of the Global Employers Organization, South Africa, Leonora Paulson, and uh, you can uh, look up the organization online as well. If you're an SMME and you feel uh, that some of the laws are a little bit too stringent, in particular because you're not at the level of your lifespan in your organization to comply with, uh, with the regulations.